Let's get more now on our top story tonight. The government's decision to scrap this evening's planned vote on Lord's reform because of an unexpected rebellion from Tory backbenchers. Well, with me now to assess how all of this is likely to affect relations within the coalition and Labour's strategy on Lord's reform are Nigel Fletcher from the Centre for Opposition Studies and in Westminster, Sunny Handel, editor of the left wing blog Liberal Conspiracy. A very good evening to both of you. Thanks for coming Hi. along to chat about this. Uh, Nigel, to you first, um, well, the question we posed is how is this going to affect the relationships within the coalition? Well, I think it's very difficult because it once again exacerbates the tensions between the two parties. Um, and one thing that um, I'm not sure has been picked up um, in all of this is that by moving the debate back to September, possibly October, it puts on a collision course with the boundary review, which of course is something which the Lib Dems have been making threats about. So it's possible that we could have a situation where at the same time as Lord's reform is being debated, we've also got the boundary review out. So that could create some, some new tensions there. OK, so the stakes potentially getting higher. Um, Sunny Handel, those in, in favour of this reform are talking, at least in public, rather optimistically about how things might be different in seven or eight weeks. Realistically, what are the chances of that happening? To be honest, I don't think that th that is likely. I think this, um, there is a very good chance that Labour is going to say we want our own time, we want to take some time debating this. We don't think that the bill is good enough in its current stage and that lo lots of changes need to be made. So I think that, um, to be honest, the Conservatives want to just push it back so that they can try and win this issue and try and placate some of their Tory rebels, but that's not going to happen. You know, we had yes, 70 what, what plus... Could they what could they possibly do to placate those rebels? I have no idea. I mean, the, the excuses they were coming out with against House of Lords reform today were... Uh, you know, indicated to me that actually they just didn't want this to happen. And it wasn't that they would get a different bill and they would make that happen. It was just they didn't want it to happen. Whereas Labour, on the other hand, are saying, well, we want to make it, we want it to happen. However, we want it to be done in a different way. We want it to be 100%, not just 80%. Uh, and, you know, we want the time to debate this bill properly. So I think that Labour, on the other hand, is easier to placate than Tory rebels will be. Uh, Nigel, what about the role of Labour in all of this? The uh, coalition partners earlier accusing Labour of being opportunistic mm. for the sake of it. Um, what, what do you think uh, Labour's role will be going forward? Could they be the key to, to all of this? I think Labour are key to it. I mean, what's very interesting is that they've managed the, the, the very neat trick of, on the one hand, supporting reform and saying that they support the principle of reform, but on the other hand, uniting with Conservative rebels who are against reform. And I think this, it's always the trick of a, an opposition to be able to catch the government out whilst at the same time maintaining their principles. Um, it's very similar, actually, to what Labour did in the, in the 1990s um, over the Maastricht Bill. Um, it's a, a textbook um, manoeuvre, and actually, the book we published last year, Philip Cowley and Mark Stewart mentioned this, that Maastricht was an example where John Smith and the Labour Party were in, in favour of the Maastricht Bill, but found lots of different areas of detail where they could catch out the government and unite with the rebels. And that's what we've seen with the programme motion, that the Labour Party in favour of reform, but at the same time uniting with Conservative rebels to defeat the programme motion. So we'll see that again when it comes back um, in the autumn. And what will be interesting to see is whether Labour can find, um, on the substance of the issue, additional points where they can unite with rebels to cause more difficulty for the government. And it's a thin line to walk. Um, Sunny Handel, um, do you think that Labour can afford to play party politics with this because actually uh, the vast majority of the public, is it fair to say, don't really care so much about Lord's reform? It's a bit of a, a Westminster bubble issue. It totally is a Westminster bubble issue. I think for the vast majority of people, the economy is the main concern. And, you know, today we had some figures saying that this economy is going to be flat for the next three to five years and it's going to be the slowest recovery ever. So I think that most people are going to be concerned about that. So yeah, it does give Labour some more opportunity to say, hey, look, we're not going to push on this. We want to take our time. And I think to a certain extent, you know, you can accuse them of being politically opportunistic, but the whole point of being in opposition is to say, hey, we want to do things our way, you know, sometimes. And so they are given an opportunity to say, how do you want this bill? And they're saying, well, we don't like the bill as it is right now. We want a bill change and we want it to be discussed properly. I don't think that's opportunistic. I wish they were more opportunistic, to be honest. Uh, but they're not taking that chance. They're saying we will support the bill later on once we're happy with some of the other things that need to be ironed out. So I think they're taking a principled position. I mean, I wish they didn't. I just wish that they said, no, actually, let's gut this bill and let's focus on the economy. 
Um, Sonny, I want to ask you uh, a question which I put to, to Nigel earlier about uh, the future of the relationship between the coalition partners. Where is that relationship headed, do you think? I think it will be worse. I mean, the, the Lib Dems have a particular problem here because they did threaten to say, well, if you're not going to push this bill forward, we're going to uh, hold back on boundary review. Now, so you, they could either now carry that threat out and say, actually, unless this bill goes through, we won't go ahead with boundary reviews, or they could say, well, okay, well, we, we're not going to carry that threat out. And if they don't carry that threat out, basically it means that the Conservatives can tell them to do whatever they want to because the, the Lib Dems have no leverage in the future. So Lib, to a certain extent, Lib Dems either carry the threat out and say, we're serious about this, or they don't. Um, either way, I think it's a lose-lose position for them, to be honest. So either way, there's going to be much more tension between the government, uh, between the Conservatives and the Lib Dems. Do you agree, Nigel Fletcher? Is it a lose-lose situation for the Lib Dems? It's difficult to see how they can get a win out of it. Um, I think they will uh, have to wait until the autumn to see exactly what the government's attitude is. If the government continues to say that they are entirely supportive and what the rebels do is up to them, then they've got no choice but to stick with it. Um, and that's what will make it interesting when we've got this, this, this conflation of the two issues, of the boundary review, which obviously the Lib Dems are holding as their nuclear option, and the, the Lord's reform. And they'll be watching the government closely to see what they're doing and trying to read into all, all the things they're doing to see whether they're serious about it. So I think we're in for an interesting autumn. But uh, at least uh, tonight it seems that the, the rebels' collective hand has been strengthened. Yes, and I think what it shows is that the rebels have got the numbers. They've got the numbers um, to show that they can defeat the government um, on this bill uh, when they ally with Labour. So as long as, as Labour decide that they're going to continue making mischief, then the government will be defeated. And that's well, the interesting dynamic that's, not, that's, that's not going to be played out in the, into the autumn. <laughs> and uh, playing this out into the autumn and beyond, Sonny, uh, you look as if you want to come in. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to say, I mean, I don't think it's, it's right to characterise this as mischief if they want to improve the bill. But... You know, you are right. I mean, Nigel is right in the, in the sense that, in one sense, it is in Labour's hand. But the key point here is that the rebels are very confident. You know, there's probably about 100 of them, and they're very confident of their position. And the government is totally scared of where they are right now. So I don't think they're going to face... They don't think they're going to face a backlash. And, and to be honest, I don't really see this bill uh, moving forward, in, given how confident the rebels are in sticking to their position. OK, well, we'll talk about it, I guess, in a, in a couple of months' time again. Uh, Sunny Handel, editor of the, the Liberal Conspiracy blog, and Nigel Fletcher from the Centre for Opposition Studies. Thank you both very much.